Welcome to another uh, WordPress administration tutorial from Eric Hepperly Designs. I'm Eric and today we're going to talk about multi-site. What is multi-site? Have you ever uh, gone on WordPress.com and seen how you can make basically as many WordPress websites as you want? Um, you see that there's thousands and thousands of WordPress websites that you can search through and what have you. Well, that's multi-site. And the way they do it is it's, the main site is WordPress.com. And then let's say you, have, you want to make a site, Bob's Driving. Then you would sign up and you would set uh, the name of your site as Bob's Driving. And then the URL would be Bob's Driving dot wordpress dot com so let's say sally wants to have a uh, accounting firm sally's accounting dot wordpress dot com etc etc well you can do the same thing for free with wordpress multi-site so let's see how to do that first and you I apologize you're going to see some of my instructions on the screen uh, I was following a tutorial by WP Learning Labs. You might you might want to check it out. I, I will put a, a link. Uh, well, there there is a link in the will be a link in the description um, because it's a really good tutorial and Bjorn goes through a lot of uh, extra information that I don't cover because this is just supposed to be a really quick video. So let us get started. So first thing you want to do is download a fresh copy of WordPress, upload. The WordPress uh, zip to your web host. You'll delete the WordPress folder if, because uh, after you upload it, everything is still in a folder that says WordPress. You don't want it to be in in the WordPress folder. Otherwise, your URL is going to end up being Bob's Driving slash WordPress or bobsdrivein.com slash WordPress. And you probably don't want the word WordPress in your in your URL, in your link that people use to get. I mean, it makes it longer, and it's it just shows that uh, you probably didn't know what you were doing. So, yeah, we're going to take the any files that are in a WordPress folder, and we'll move it up one level so that it's in the root. Um, and then, of course, we'll create a new database and link it to that. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if this is a little uh, confusing to you at this point, I'm going to have you refer back to the video that I made on how to download and install WordPress Core. So that's just a basic video. It shows you step-by-step -step how to download and install WordPress, and that should help you out. Okay, so moving on. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure WordPress for multi-site. So the first thing uh, is let's go to our web host. For me, my web host is 50 webs. So I'm going to go over here. Nope, here I am in my file manager. You probably have something that's uh, like, you know, a C panel or something, but mine is a, this custom control panel. And so I'm going to go to uh, WordPress config, and I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Of course, before you start doing any editing in WordPress uh, wp-config.php, make sure you make a backup copy. I already made a backup copy, so I'm okay to do this right now. But what you want to do is you want to paste in uh, this define constant statement. This will allow multi-site. Multi-site is already built into the WordPress that, that you just downloaded recently. It's in every WordPress version since 3.0, but most people still don't know about it. Uh, so what we'll do, see where it says that's all, stop editing, happy blogging? Right above that, we'll post... That. Now, I'm not going to save it yet. I, I want to show you how you can tell that it's working. Right here, if I go into Tools, see what's there? i got Available Tools, Import, Export, Export Personal, Erase Personal Data. Okay, 
That's our standard WordPress core. Now, as soon as I click Save, this little key right here is going to make another option pop up, which will allow us to do the network setup. So here we go, I'm saving. Now I'm gonna go back, and if I Control Shift R to refresh, then I go to Tools. Well, okay, maybe I need to, oh, that's right. <laughs> And a typo in there. It has to be multi site, not multi site. Let's fix that here in my notes. Okay. Once again, refresh. Go to tools. And now you see we have network setup. So I click network setup. And after you click network setup, you know what it'll say. Warning, an existing WordPress network is detected. Okay, that's because I already installed a WordPress network. But I thought I uninstalled it. Apparently that didn't work. Remove the network database tables. Okay, so let me delete. Oh my goodness. Create a new network. Okay, so instead of creating a new network from scratch, I actually have the uh, config files from the old network, and I'll just show you that way. Okay, so first, what they want you to do is go into wp-config.php, and again, above that, that's all stop editing, but right after the, the multi-site enable that you just put in there, you're going to copy all this stuff right here, and yours may say something different. Obviously, it's going to say domain current site. So copy what's on your site, not what you see on my screen. So you're going to copy that, Control-C, and then you come over here, and you'll go into, uh, for the wp-config, so watch me. I'm going to go ahead and delete this wp-config. I wouldn't recommend you to do this. This is just what I'm doing because I already have the WP config that I need. So here's my multi-site one, and I'm going to duplicate it. That way I'll still have my backup, and then I'll take the copy, and I'll rename it to just WP config. Hopefully this works. If not, I'll have to do a whole different video. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing with my HT access. I'm gonna duplicate it, we come into the copy and just rename it to HT access. Oh, can't can't do that all the way yet. I got to delete this one first. Okay, delete that. And then there we go. This one will be. I don't know what happened to that. Okay, duplicate. All right, go home and backspace. Hopefully, I did this right and mess myself up. And we'll hit enter. It's fun to troubleshoot, right? Okay, so now if you've done this right, you have to log in again. So I'm going to refresh it and it'll see if it took my information. The original configuration steps are shown here for reference. Cool. So you'll have to log back in. I didn't have to log back in, so but I'll log out just to show you. Okay, so there we go. Click log in. And now what you'll notice is you'll have a My Sites up here. That's new. That's for your, uh, what Bjorn is calling your super admin. Uh, although WordPress calls it network admin. So what you're doing is you're gonna be able to create a network of websites. Now, there's one caveat I wanna say. With your web host, you want to make sure, and I, I found this out the hard way, you want to make sure, if you go to my domains, go to your domains, and find, uh, if you 
the way mine is, and yours may be this way also, is it has a wildcard subdomain, right? So that means I can do um, anything. Anything that I put as a subdomain under here is covered by however this is configured. So if I go up to uh, hosted domains, that's where you want to be, and you go into your domain, you want to make sure your subdomains are shown. It's not going to show all my subdomains, but instead what it shows me is that. And so I can go into uh, one of these as edit. There should be an edit. Traffic. No. So it's going to be in here. Okay. That gear is edit. So I can go into edit domain and 50 webs and see this path is set to point to eheperly.com. I think that's what we're talking about here. Perfect. All right. So now I've showed you that. You just want to make sure that, that you've got your eheperly, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> whatever your domain is. Uh, in my case, it's eheperly, but whatever your domain is and have it point to uh, your wildcard subdomain. Okay. Once you have that done, everything should work properly. If you don't have that done, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get 404 uh, website not found when you do this next step. And I'll show you the next step. How do I make a website in my new network? Well, okay, so I go to uh, my sites, then I go to network, and then you want to go to sites and add new and I'm gonna make one called Wraith one and see it already has the dot .com. so the way that wordpress.com would have wordpress.com and then you'd put your whatever you want your site name to be a lot of people put their their full name or whatever like my mom is Sandy Harriman so she's got a Sandy Harriman dot wordpress.com um, you put that in here and you don't have to put the the last part and it says only lowercase letters numbers and hyphens are allowed so I could make uh, best SEO um, marketing dot Eric Hepperly dot com I could make um, happy f fairies however you spell it how are happy fairs I could be a circus leader or something so it's endless what I can put in there so let's do happy fairs why not happy fairs and let's see size title happy fairs and admin email I'm gonna put my admin email That way, uh, I'll get notifications about modifications to uh, the site. So I click Add Site, and how do we know if it worked? Well, we can visit the dashboard like it said, so I'll do Open Link and New Tab. And it doesn't say Error, so that's a plus. How do I know that that's the right dashboard? Well, if I go to Users and go to Your Profile, this might work, this might not, I'm not sure. Let's try Sunrise. No. No, that's gonna, the dashboard's gonna be the same. You probably have to get some kind of plugin or something. But we'll just leave it at the default for now. Uh, all, all users add new year profile, so we're not doing none of that. We're gonna go back to the dashboard. Here's how we know we're in Happy Fairs dashboard, because it says Happy Fairs. And if I want to view it, I can hover on that, click View Site. And I'm going to open a new window so you can see what it looks like. Boom, there we go. And you can see down here it says Happy Fair.